We hope to have our production hoverboard ready by October 21st, 2015, in time for Marty's arrival. What do you mean we're in the future? October 21st, 2015. This is a necessary step. This is a stepping stone to Marty McFly's ride over hedges and rocks and curbs. We are about to release our Kickstarter campaign and we're asking the community, the crowd, all those hover enthusiasts out there to help us design a production hoverboard. And uh, we're doing more than that though. One of our perks is, is our white box. The white box is the developer kit. You know, you can get this thing, you can leave it like it is, you can get a couple of them and hover something more. Uh, or you can take that hover engine out and build whatever you want to build. And you can take it home and you can take out that hover engine and put it into anything you want to hover. Uh, we want to put this technology into the hands of everybody to solve problems we don't even know exist yet. When people realize that what was supposed to be impossible is possible, that you know, all the barriers are going to come down and people are going to figure out how to solve all kinds of problems. Okay, so step back for me, like tell me how this technology works in the first place. There's something called Lenz's Law. And Lenz's Law, uh, if you have a changing magnetic field around a conductive surface, you create a secondary magnetic field. And that's what we're doing. But we're just doing it in a very efficient way using something called magnetic field architecture. What's actually new about your technology? Uh, magnets, you know, and bullet trains. They're the uh, uh, maglev and bullet trains, they work on a number of different systems. And this system is simpler than all of them and much, much less expensive. One of the ways it works, or one of the things we're able to do, is move omnidirectionally over a, not a conductive surface. We can hover a dynamic payload of significant mass. People, people who move around. Uh, lots of equipment or, or other payloads. I'm an architect, not a scientist. And so I looked at this whole problem a little bit differently. If you can hover a train, why not a house? And that's where the idea came from. Uh, we have a low-tech version, a way of decoupling structures from the earth in the event of earthquakes or floods or rising sea levels. And we want to use the hoverboard, the Hendo hoverboard, and the Hendo hover engines as a way of s sort of capturing attention and, and bringing it back to these very, very important causes. These are a lot of really big picture, very expensive projects. Um, where do you even start? How do you start? We need some stepping stones. One of them would be a hover park. We're looking for a strategic partner to help open a hover park. We're also realizing that things like, uh, uh, well, entertainment has some really great opportunities. Every ride in an amusement park can be made better, more efficient with this technology and provide a completely unique experience. But also industrial, factory automation. In a lot of factories, floor space is a precious commodity. Imagine being able to move things around, you know, with one hand in a factory that weighed tons. So how have you guys um, existed the past two years? Up until this summer, uh, Jill and I have funded everything with all of our savings. And uh, that disappeared, and then we turned to our friends and family. Uh, we raised a, a million and a half dollars, and we built this amazing team. Okay, so this, this business you're building here, the technology has to require a lot of uh, partnerships. All those young inventors, those creators, those makers, this technology in their hands, that's the partnership we want to make.